Okay. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, so you just learned all about the, the awesome benefits of Kubernetes, also known as KAS. And uh, this talk is going to be about our, our two container solutions that do not require a Kubernetes. Uh, I'm Mike DiPaolo, by the way. I'm the service reliability engineer on Pulp, or one of them now. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, you know, the, one of the questions will come up is why have all these container solutions that don't require Kubernetes? You know, Kubernetes is great. Kubernetes is the leading paradigm for how to scalably manage, how to make manage scalable, you know, applications. Uh, but what happens if you're not trying to do massive scale, or you, or you don't want the infrastructure required for that? Uh, for this reason, we have you know three solutions: the single container which is just one container running multiple processes. S6 is the service manager. Um, we have the OCI development environment, and we have uh, Docker Compose, which does feature multiple containers. So how do they relate to each other? So like I said, in a single container, you know, you have multiple processes. Uh, there's one of those processes is scalable. The, wor the other worker processes are scalable. Uh, the OCI development environment is the development environment version of the single container. Uh, it, uh, it, you know, it, it lets you do things like, you know, mount uh, your your directories contain the Swiss code for pulp, and it and it provides, you know, convenience features like resetting the database, things that users would never uh, uh, need or want. Um, Docker Compose. Uh, is based on the tr the way containers are normally supposed to be used, which is one process per container. Like PID one inside the container is the definitive like process that defines the container. And this, the API, the content, and the workers are scalable. And one thing I'm, I've been working on that, that I'm very proud to announce is now we can now transfer the data directories between the single container and the Docker Compose. Uh, so users can migrate easily between those two solutions. Yeah. Uh, first, I'll uh, start by demoing the single container. Uh, give me a second. So the instructions we have are on this one page on the Pulp website. Oh, we're gonna make some uh, directories right right now. These are uh, you know settings is the settings directory that you you put your uh, your your settings that uh, YAML file in, and this is how users generally customize almost everything in the pop application, including like object storage if they want to use object storage, which is which is a pop, you know a feature of the single container, you know, which is a feature of pulp. Um, pulp storage is the actual content on disk. It's the var the pulp directory, and pgsql is the uh, is where the the, uh, the database is stored. Because remember, we're running Postgres database. And now we're just going to create a simple uh, settings.yaml file. And the content origin is always tricky because uh, it has to be set to the actual URL that users will access. But because we're using a shell here, we can put the host name of the host, my, lap, my developer laptop, in the settings.yaml file. Settings.py file, actually. I mean, I'm misspeaking. It's settings.py. Though I believe it could be a YAML file because we are using Dynacom for the configuration. You are Though correct. I always yes. Do a Python file. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's a, that's our de facto convention. Yeah. And I have SC links enabled, so there's going to be an extra option to this command. You notice this command. Basically, what it says is, you know, dash dash detach says, uh, don't like block the terminal. Just like let the, don't you know, don't let me continue the terminal after running. Publish 8080 uh, is uh, it, it means that the, the application will be accessible on the host at port 8080. The name of the container will be pulp. Then we have those directories, and we use this to so that the container can create its own file systems, uh, internal file systems that that slash fuse. And the image is called pulp slash pulp. That's why it's known on all the container image registries. We support three different registries. Docker Hub, Quay, and GitHub container registry. And it turns out 
I already have a container named pulp. So um, I have to delete that first. Now that the container is started, I can check its status by running podman logs. This is going to follow along as the container starts up. It's doing some magic, like it's modifying the permissions on the Postgres directory. Hmm. Okay, this is weird. It should be further along than this. Yeah, I know, right? But it did modify the permissions on it. Okay, it, it's it's first further along now. So some of the things that you can see happening is well, I'm not going to worry about this. I don't know why it had that issue modifying the permissions on Postgres SQL directory. It's running the migrations. I'm going to make sure that the container that PGS code actually contains the database. Yeah, everything looks perfectly fine. It's running from the perspective of the container, like UID 26, which on my host is this UID is owning the Postgres 12 database directory. And that database is correctly generated. The, the database migrations are still running. This takes like like 30 seconds or so on average. Yeah, there it is. It's finished. This click ENV error is harmless. We have a known issue for that of an up. Um, and you notice that uh, the workers are scalable. It added a worker, the second worker proce uh, process to the container. And yeah, now that it's up, Oh, did the redirect happen? Hmm. Oh. Uh, yeah, is Galaxy supposed to be in the URL there? It shouldn't be. I think it just like it, it memorized the redirect. What happened? I think the browser memorized the redirect. Yep. Um. <laughs> Open yeah, they're, they're cached for the site. Window. Yeah, just open the private window. That's the easiest thing to do. There we go. All right, we have all this, uh, this. So this is the default pulp image, pulp slash pulp uh, latest, also called pulp slash pulp stable. It has the set of all the stable plugins. And... Uh, you see, there's two online workers. That one content app is, li is listed twice, actually. Uh, there's one content app, yeah. And database is running, and oh, Redis is not running at this moment, but we can, if you were to just specify in the settings that Pi, uh, Redis would be running now. Um, the, the, the daemon does start Redis, actually. Or the container does. Yeah, it's just the settings didn't provide a connection information, right? Right, yep, exactly. Yeah, we should update that probably on our website. I'm going to file an issue for that. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. And I'll show you real quick what it's like inside the container. Podman, exactly. The name of the container we specified. I'm running a bash shell, a 6 RC list dash A, or dash A list. Uh, these are all the services that are running. Uh, some of these are like not really running services, but it's like scripts that run it, it's stored up. Other ones like Pulp Core API, PostgreSQL, Redis, Nginx, those are actual, those are actual long running services. And let me think, let's see what else I have to go back to my slides. We created the process in directory readers in the 
in the settings.py, we, uh, we have another image you can pick too. And this is into the unstable image of pulp. You can also pick pulp galaxy and G. Um, and one, so one thing we can do is we can pass the number of workers. So I'm going to restart the container with, a, with more than two workers this time. I'm in. So this will be safe. This will not delete the data directories, but it will delete the container. Now I'm going to do another option. Dash E num workers equals four. We'll check and make sure I did it spelling correctly. Yep. And workers, number of workers is four. Uh, this time the PostgreSQL uh, permission script did not hang. Database is migrated already. It's not spending 30 to 60 seconds migrating database. And Oh, yeah. Let's give it a second for it to add the new workers because it does. Oh. OK, I'm surprised that didn't work. Oh yeah, I. I guess I. You changed the variable. Yeah, I did. And is this something that's already committed, or is it just your local changes? Uh, I don't know why I wrote num workers. I just no. This is that's that's actually that's actually in the that's actually in the the the, the logic, you know. Sorry, I'm nervous. I'm just typing. That's all right. You're doing great. This is, uh, yeah. I really appreciate the level of detail in this presentation. Thank you. Yeah. I've only had to provide commentary, no questions. Yeah. <laughs> Adding workers two through four. Now, if I go back to this, okay, there's four workers. Woo! Yep. And if I run the, the service management command, you'll see that there's uh, th workers three and four. So, hooray! Debugging and we, this is how we don't debug in production. We debug during the demo. And I know, uh, the most production that we get. <laughs> yeah, right. And uh, if you want to, so there's no. It's harmless to delete and recreate the container. Really, like it's it. But you could also just use the built-in doc. Uh, Podman feature and stop and start it. So uh, I do Podman stop. Oh. Wow, again. And all these commands that work in Podman, they'll work equally well in Docker, by the way. Uh, like there's, there's like, there's, there are some small differences between Podman and Docker, but there's like none are actually remotely relevant for this case. Um, and now I can just do podman start pulp, which is quicker to type than running the long uh, create like run command, which basically is create and run the container is what it's it's doing. 
now that the container is starting up again, it starts up in you know seconds. Do I have my uh? Yeah, here we go. Yeah, the container is running again. So some of the things that are uh, uh, to do for the pulp uh, single container, uh, we want to specify Unicorn CLI options. Um, so many most settings for pulp are in the settings.py file. Like you, know, you can even switch object storage for this things that pi. Uh, but uh, there are some options for Unicorn that users should be able to specify. Like they can actually scale the number of worker uh, sub processes. Uh, this is something that's in pulp installer that's not in the single container yet. Um, both minor and micro textual images. So basically, be, due to legacy reasons, before the container images were unified, uh, like some container images have like x dot y, other ones have x dot y dot z. We want to be able to specify both, and some of them don't have either of those. We want to we want to make those versions permanently available. Uh, token auth is not implemented yet. Um, we also have a separate container, like it'll be like latest SSL or 3.20.1-SSL. We want to instead just do an option like dash E uh, SSL to do SSL mode instead. Uh, many users have requested a sample Docker file so they can build it in their environments and understand exactly how it's built. But we currently have basically like we have three layers of Docker files or container files that. Uh, would provide the pulp slash pulp image, so we can concatenate them together and do that during and put them in the docs, and that needs to be done during the docs build process. And finally, we have a new documentation website, but it's really incomplete, so we'll be adding to it. So, uh, due to time constraints, as well as the fact that uh, 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 David Newswanger is giving a presentation on this on Thursday, I think. I'm not going to demo the OSI development environments, but you know, some overview of how it, it works. It it takes the the intermediate uh, one of the, the two bottom layers of pulps uh, uh, container images, and it adds a new th uh, and it recreates the third layer. Uh, uh, so it basically, like almost everything, it's it's basically a superset of 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 the pulps as pulp image. You you run you 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 use the OCI inf command that builds it and then and then and then uh, launches it with the up command. It provides special features like OCI and V shell and OCI DB reset, and it also has a feature to run the test. And it, it goes out of its way to make sure that you are capable of running the test, such as installing the test dependencies. Um, when you're in the container, you have uh you know the service management commands. I don't have time to demo these. It's already 921, but it's okay. I think yeah. you're right that David is gonna show us more about this and we can yeah. talk about the compose. Right. But note that S6RC is your very, very lightweight replacement for uh for uh you know system D and you know this is the current command that you would use to put to stop all the services, dash D ch ch change. Uh and to put them back to start the services is dash U change. In the future, we're going to replace the list of services with a bundle. So you'll just have a bundle probably named pulp and just do, instead of listing all four services, you'll just list pulp. And that'll include all of the worker, uh, scalable worker processes as well. So next we have Docker Compose, aka Podman Compose. And uh, this time, the number of uh, content instances and API instances is fully scalable. N not just the sub processes, but also the, num uh, the, the entire you know process. Um, each you know, each of these blue, uh, Nginx is a single container and is the reverse proxy. Uh, we do not support Apache, but I don't think there's a need for it though at this time. Uh, I've not seen any need for it yet. Um, again, all these are regular containers, single process containers running pulp core content, pulp API, pulp worker. They access Redis, which gets stored. To a directory on disk, or potentially a like a a semi-permanent uh, Docker or Podman volume. 
PostgreSQL is also its own container, and Redis is its own container. PostgreSQL is its own container. There's only one of those, of each of those, at least for the time being. Um, and then the storage backend is by default uh, the file system, or which can be a folder on disk or a Docker uh, managed volume. And you can also specify via settings the object storage. Um, so I'll, I'll demo launch, I'll, I'll launch the Docker Compose environment right now. I'm in. completely delete the container so that those data directories are free. Um, and I'm going to go to the images slash compose directory. Here you can see that there's the docker compose.yaml and, and docker compose.folders.yaml. The only difference between these two is that uh, folders.yaml uses permanent folders on disk, like the ones I already created, whereas docker compose.yaml uses uh, docker managed volumes. So docker compose dash f, saying this is the file I want to use, and uh, up is the command to up the up the environment. And there's a reason why I'm using uh, so. As it starts off, you'll see that there's a reason why I'm using Docker Compose rather than Podman Compose. Docker Compose has much nicer output. It tells you and call it what con which container is providing the output that you're seeing on screen, whereas Podman Compose just it, it you don't know which whether each line is coming from which container you know which con which container each line is coming from. Um, do you know if there's an issue already filed for this with Podman Compose? Uh, it's just an unimplemented feature, so I'm sure they're aware of it. I'm sure I'm not the first I'm person. Gonna, to yeah. I'm going to go check. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's a command line option or something. Yeah. So these are waiting on Postgres. Uh, Oh. oh, I don't know why this is not working right now. I'm all right. Varlib Postgres group. Oh, it's because it's the different. Oh, that's right. That's because I'm switching between Docker Compose and Podman Compose. So the UID and GID scheme is different. Yes. So I'm going to switch back to Podman Compose. <laughs> so it's pulling the images for, uh, it's pulling the the lightweight uh, images right now, uh, that, that just that don't have S six and everything in them. That's cool. But uh, you could do it with the same images that were. Oh yes, in fact, our CI tests that. Our CI try uh, test it with the big image actually. Yeah, the big image is the one called Pulp. And it has S six to manage services. Yeah, exactly. If you pass it in a parameter, yeah, that states which service you want it to run, it will operate as this pulp minimal image. Yep, exactly. If you don't specify a service, it, it launches S six and and therefore all the services. If you specify an individual service, it runs the individual service. So it's creating a network. It's creating creating net networks and it's creating the, the pulp web the main pulp image is creating the pulp web image with this you know pulp web is nginx with all the config files for the uh, for the uh, for the uh, for the plugins the config file snippets so this time the it actually finds the the, the, the migrated database because the database is actually is running correctly you can yeah. Again, you can migrate easily between these two containers solutions, but you can't migrate from Podman Compose to Compose without running without running special chunk commands that we have not uh, run up yet and prescribed yet. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, yeah, I don't know if we need to uh, be providing information on how to go from Podman, uh, from Docker Compose to Podman Compose. It's like, I feel like it falls slightly outside of our domain. Yeah, it's, um, it's not strictly needed. It's, it's something I'm, I'm guaranteed to do, though. It's, it's something that I, it's, I yeah. Mean, yeah, I think we could have a little note in our doc okay. saying that yeah. there, if you see this error, check the permissions. <laughs> yeah. Show you the images slash compose real quick. This is an uh, you know extremely uh, extremely uh, uh, complex where the, the the compose logic is. Basically, what it's saying is you know these are the containers. Here's a container like Postgres. These are the ports it exposes. But ultimately, the main port we care about is port uh, is the web process, which is uh, port eighty. 8080 actually, and it coordinates networking and uh, shared volumes between the containers. It also says that which contain services depend on which other services. It's so a container, it, one or more containers comprise a service, uh, but the containers are basically identical. Comprise that service. There you go. There's the status page. And now, here's the one of the cool things that's happening is that uh, if I go inside the pulp web container. Oops, oops. I can run the ns lookup command, and you see this is how it accesses those multiple pulp content uh, pulp content uh, containers. It uses a single DNS record like pulp content and pulp API, and it has one IP address per uh, uh, per uh, per container. So one domain name maps to multiple IP addresses. And here's the really cool part: if I was using uh, Docker Compose and Podman Compose, I could run the Docker Compose uh, scale command, and I can modify those number of containers in real time. I can add more processes while it's running. Um, I now compose scale pulp worker, or sorry, pulp pulp worker two, but you know pulp 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 API pulp content equals four. And so this and is then, another feature that Podman Compose is still lacking. Yes, Podman Compose lacks this feature. Okay. Um. So yeah. So some of the things that are remain so that's that's uh, that's that's the compose environment. Um, some things that are remaining is you know SSL support, um, mounting etc, uh, including so you can you know preserve your certificates and not just your settings.py file. Um, better, uh, you know, also better system managing config files. Better cut. Uh, Better customize the .dot compose files because right now we just have two files and there's all sorts of potential options we want to add in the future. Um, and and right now Nginx is it's use it's accessing multiple servers, but for full customization we want to be able to use upstream server groups. Using this with a DNS with a dynamic list of servers is a paid feature, so you have to write your own workaround uh, for Nginx to do that. Yeah. And as I mentioned before, you know, you can transfer these uh the pulp storage mm -hmm. and the postgres directory. Yep. Um you mentioned uh a to do of better management of, of config files. Um can you tell us more about what config files you mean? I mean right now we have this uh settings dot 
Yeah, I'm, I'm specifically referring to settings that settings that pi. Mm -hmm. And settings that pi, like we provide a same set of defaults, but if you modify, if I were to modify settings that pi, I were to do a Uh, what would be a know, is, you can do cache enabled false or something. Like I don't know. Yeah, yeah I'll just do Flemish equals true. I want to be uh, a good citizen and report to pulp what I'm, uh, what, uh, what, I, what, I, what, what, what awesome plugins I'm using. Um, so now, if somebody wants to get the latest stuff, it pulled dash dash rebase. I can't do that. So we want to make the it's well, we want to. You know, customize that to directory. You know, I got gotcha. you. Or create like a we want to generate yeah. that to directory just like we do for the pulp uh, for the single container. Yeah, yeah, but the, which is just documentation for the user. Well, right. and also, yeah. one of the things you mentioned that you want to add is the ability to mount volumes, right? Uh I mean, we we mount volumes right now, but we have separate Docker Compose files that, like, like this right here is a is a, a pulp volume, whereas this is a pulp folder, you know. Mm hmm. To your question. And the uh, the uh, I, well, so right now you said we mount volumes. Uh, right. Yes, we, if you're using the folders uh, version of the of Docker Compose, on the right you can see the uh, on the left you can see folders dot yaml. On the right you can see the regular one. Oh, uh -huh. what are th these? Are two separate Compose files? Yes. Okay. On the left is the is the folders dot yaml. On the right is the regular one. Okay. The regular one uses volumes. And the volumes are managed by Podman or Docker versus Correct. Yes. With the folders, you as the admin running this, you created these folders and they're managed by the host's file system, basically. Yes. It's it's like admin managed, basically. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. No problem. All right, so like I said, the big thing is you can transfer your, your data directories between those uh, two solutions. And, you know, as I mentioned before, they're, they're now based on two, a base container file, actually two layers of container files. Um, sorry, one layer, I mean, my, my apologies. Both the minimal images and, and the big SX images. Um, they're both using PostgreSQL 13. Uh, so you don't have to like export, like dump and, Import your database, you know, just reuse the folders. They have the same set of plugins. Um, the static content is now baked into both images rather than generated at runtime. And other small details, like which uh, 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 be accounted for too. Okay, so I'm over time, but that's if that's the end of my presentation. Do we want to do additional questions? Uh, for the sake of time, I think we're going to move. I'm going to move yeah. this on. We can discuss Great. at the end of the day. Yep. Awesome. Thank you very much.